Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me for my talk, where we will explore in depth just how it is that we create the world around us according to our orientation to it, and specifically how this is practically applied in evolutionary astrology. So let's dig in. Let's talk about mastery. The way we often use that word in our culture implies dominance. The way I'm using the word is to speak of achieving the state of mastery that one arrives at when they've actualized their fullest power in relationship to whatever it is they set out to master. To consider this an act of dominance over anything, such as the environment, is guaranteed to ensure that you do not fulfill this potential. Mastering yin yang is meant to refer to a state of full integration within both active and receptive. We live our lives pivoting between active and receptive and often have no understanding of how our actions are received by the environment, therefore informing the environment what shape to ultimately take in order to support our realities. On the nature of how we inform our environment what shape to take, I'm going to take a very brief stroll into quantum physics, if you could just bear with me for a moment. Through the work of Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Arthur Compton, Niels Bohr, Erwin Schrodinger, and many others, our current model of quantum physics shows that matter does not exist as physical when not in the presence of an observer. All matter exists in two forms, both a solid form and a waveform, and it is the act of observation that causes it to change states. Furthermore, it's been discovered that if you take two subatomic particles, like electrons, in certain instances, when you do something to one, it will always affect the other. When studying this process, they were able to determine that the communication between these particles and their transition from wave to solid was instant, creating a basis for understanding scientifically for the first time that there is no separation between these particles and building the foundation for the scientific acknowledgement of there being a non-local plane of existence, meaning that they exist outside of space and time in a place of absolute unity. Using very special tools of measurement, when particle waveform is recorded as a static image, it reveals a pattern of overlapping concentric circles, each with a hollow center, a still point in the middle which the waves and therefore matter are emanating outward from. It is through the still point that unity is accessed. So everything that you see around you is being birthed from unity, unfolding and enfolding back into infinity. And it is our observation of it that gives it shape. In this way, bringing this back to the yin-yang principle, our observation is the active yang principle, and matter is the yin, the receiver of our activity, being embodied into form. In the constant infinitesimal birth process. So it is also very spot on to connect yin with birth. While our consciousness is actually the impregnator, or the yang, and both are necessary for the creation of and sustaining of life. No matter where we are in our cultivation of consciousness or our level of awareness, we are impregnating each and every moment. Mastery is, first and foremost, the work of mastering your consciousness. Actively, yang, and consciously engaging with our environment is the first step in being able to direct matter, yin, into supportive forms. The next step in the process is truly understanding that as all matter springs from the non-local plane of unity, we are not separate from it, nor can you separate it from any other thing. So we must learn to work with matter. To do this, we must be connected to both yin and yang, working together as one. If we want to be the creator of the world we want to live in, rather than it being a world reacting to our unconsciousness, we must honor that this is the masculine and feminine together, the impregnator and the impregnated, which equals the creator, a holy union. Now bringing all this back to astrology, let's have a refresher on yin and yang as they specifically relate to astrology, where we can see all of the above truly play out and where we can explore what it exactly means to work with matter. So just a refresher, Yang is striking out, action, invention, creation, will, intent, shining, it's white. Fire and air signs, Aries, Leo, Gemini, Libra, Sagittarius, and Aquarius, it is active and assertive. 
yin is holding, it's feminine, it's matter, structure, absorption, the womb, black. It's represented with earth and water signs. So that's Taurus, Virgo, Cancer, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Pisces. And it is receptive and reactive. All structure is yin and the structure that holds what we've manifested through the yang impulses. The symbols that make up the glyphs for the planets tell us a lot about how the planet is meant to function, and specifically in relationship to the journey of mastery, both in consciousness and matter. We find this by breaking them down to their individual pieces and then seeing how these elements are positioned to interact with each other. The circle represents spirit. The all that exists in unity in the non-local plane, the still point, birthing variety and interaction. The non-local nature of spirit is represented in the circle, which has no beginning or end. Just as Voltaire said, God is a circle who centers everywhere and circumference is nowhere. The crescent is the soul, spirit folded onto itself such that it may witness and experience itself through the overlappings of consciousness, moving away from a singularity and into infinite individualized expressions. The cross represents the physical, matter itself, as it is the intersection of time and space which creates a locality. Just as holograms can be made by capturing the wave pattern of an object, such as discussed in the above section about quantum physics, this wave pattern can be captured onto a piece of holographic film, and then with pure light, a laser beam shining through it and intersecting that beam with another beam of pure light on the other side, the image of the object is cast at the place of the intersection, hence locality. It is also very notable that yang represents shining, as in the expression of light, just as yang <coughs> also represents our consciousness. As the holographic film recreates the image of the item that the waveform was captured from, when we shine the light of our awareness onto an object, it switches from a wave state into a solid local state, yin, as it is receptive to us. And finally, the arrow shows action or direction. It is a striking out of our consciousness into our environment. While the soul is the quality of our impact and is the greatest influence we have as it is the seat of our consciousness, our willpower represented by the arrow is the motion of this influence. Turning now back to the signs, we will refer to the yin and yang function of each sign, as well as the glyphs of each sign's corresponding planet, to get an idea of how each archetype is connecting these elements together to both inform and create life. In EA, we look at the trajectory of the soul into consciousness, and very much in the form as well. The spark of life, then is chased into life that is Aries, does not have an environment to inform without Taurus, the first yin sign, and which represents the most basic of environments, nature, and which gives us a body and nourishes and sustains it. As we advance around the chart, layers are added to the complexity of our development, both internal and external, on our way to the mastery of our soul's own fully integrated and individuated archetypal self, full selfhood of the soul. And Aquarius, then connecting back to unity and the non-local plane in Pisces. Starting with Aries and Mars. In Glyph, Mars shows that spark of life force, the arrow, through sheer will, striking out from spirit, the circle. It's the initiation of individualized consciousness on the most primordial level. Mars and Aries is freedom. It's not yet bound by expectations imposed by the outside which is why it struggles at times when met with boundaries or barriers. It's the first strike of independence and individuation. So it relates to being an individual in the way that it orients to its environment. As willpower itself, Mars desires freedom to feel the pure, unrestrained impulse of action taken. It values the lessons that come from experiences of the world and to have a world to act as a container for our experiences, for us to strike out into, there must be a yin to hold that and contain that. Enter Taurus, nature herself, the building blocks of material form and a container for life. Taurus and Venus now creates a buffer for this pure instinctive life force, 
providing it a container and slowing it down into denser forms. It is the relationship between these two, the yin and yang together, that are each essential in working together to create life. This is the thing I'll repeat many times throughout the talk, so it'll continue to be relevant. The relationship between the first yin and yang signs is the starting point for matter coming into form. We can take away from this support knowing that we can, in fact, will things into physical manifestation. We only have to go through spirit to do so. The Venus glyph shows exactly that. It is a cross representing the creation of matter through the intersection of time and space coming out of source itself as represented by the circle. It is the same source which the arrow in the Mars glyph springs from. Matter, the cross, does not spring forth from the arrow, is not our willpower alone that is doing the creating. It is through connection and cooperation with unity and matter that matter is birthed. As we cannot separate any one thing from unity and are ourselves not separate from it, it is by aligning our own personal will and cooperation with that of spirit that conscious co-creation comes into effect. But the thing that you are wanting to birth must travel through time and space to come into fulfillment. And spirit supports the needs of all, so you must work within the boundaries of the natural flow of life in harmony with it and supporting the harmony of all things. Venus is harmony in its most basic of expressions. I talk about this in my talk, making the most of Venus. <coughs> Taurus and Venus now create a buffer for this pure, instinctive life force, providing it a container and slowing it down into denser forms. It is the relationship between these two, the yin and yang together, that are each essential in working together to create life, as stated before. The relationship between the two first, yang and yin signs, is the starting point for matter coming into form. We can take away from this support in knowing that we can, in fact, will things into a physical manifestation. There have been numerous times that a scientist in their study of nature will set out to discover a particle they're certain must exist, only to find it suddenly spring into life right where they're looking. Gemini and Mercury is the beginning of duality. The soul, the crescent, is above matter, spirit between and matter below. The quality of what springs forth from spirit, the circle, into matter, the cross, is informed by the soul, the crescent above. It is in Gemini that self-awareness becomes possible. We take in our environment and make certain determinations about what we take in. We think about them. We file them away in our brains and in their own sort of categories. <coughs> we begin collecting information. That is to say, once we are informing, giving form to uh, something, it becomes a category or filed away as a certain thing. And it becomes somewhat static a static materialization, matter, and time and space, the cross. The things that we collectively manifest as source holds our collective categorical beliefs do become somewhat collectively static. Yet, as we seek to approach things with an open mind, keeping possibility open, they become less tied and restrictive. The expression, change your mind, change your life, has great significance. But again, we must work with unity. It is possible to change the world around you, how you experience it and what is available to you simply by changing your mind and mental approach to it, allowing for possibilities to open up, even seemingly miraculously, as long as it does not overtly fringe on another person's reality. Gemini, again, is yang and has a direct bearing and influence on the yin sign which follows it, Cancer. In cancer, the structure of the ego begins to form. You form a sense of identity based on the beliefs you take on and their yang expression and influence over this development. In another word, you can say that what you identify in Gemini becomes an identity in cancer, moving from objectification to object. Most of this identification happens in childhood, both through environmental experiences and to some extent, through the process of osmosing with the beliefs of your caregivers passing on collective intergenerational beliefs. The moon glyph is simply a crescent, symbolizing the soul. While cancer and the moon is attributed to ego formation, the ego is not the soul, but is rather the shell we've built up around the soul. True soul expression is the aim of the individuation process, and mastery is a fullest alignment with an expression of our essence. In the meantime, the ego holds any beliefs that are not in the greatest alignment with your soul's inherent truth. 
though the ego is influenced by aspects of your truth being filtered through the limiting beliefs. This is the old trope of nature versus nurture. And in this case, you can see that it is nature and nurture. The most basic beginnings of beliefs begin in Gemini. When you think you know something and act according to the assumptions you've made in Gemini, it colors your experiences of the world and impacts the perpetuation of the world that you believe yourself to be in, which in turn impacts the reality that you create. The ego is our soul being out of the purest of resonance with our truth or our essence. In our journey of individuation, we are able to follow the frequencies of our own personal archetypes, realigning our consciousness gradually from ego expression to soul expression. That which guides us on our path to wholeness and the expression of our fully aligned soul is our essence, our essential nature, that which ensouls us. This comes in through Leo, our next yang sign, which directs and focuses our soul in its development. Leo and the sun is on the most basic of levels, the expression of our divine essence. It is our channel through which we express the essence of our soul and is as connected to spirit. While the moon glyph represents our soul, the sun glyph is pure spirit, pure source energy with a dot in the center, representing the individual soul. Singular is one soul and singular in the context of unity. As unity expresses itself through us, we are a mere reflection of source energy being reflected back at it. Just as the moon reflects the light of the sun, we are expressing through each of us source light. The unique ways in which we express the source light is again, our process of individuation driven by our essence. Leo is of course the integration point of Aquarius, which is our aim of individuation. As we create and put ourselves out into the world, we impact it for better or worse. Virgo is where we can examine our actions and how we're impacting the world. As the next yin sign, it is the container that holds for us the means to observe and analyze the impact, or even to analyze who we are relative to the environment we're in. In Virgo, we turn this expression of essence and turn it around and attempt to refine it. We take the creative instincts that are expressed in Leo's yang expression and we turn it into a craft or service. It's the beginning of our shifting our focus to awareness of others. It is represented again by Mercury, and we can revisit the symbolism of this work. In Gemini, this instinct to analyze was happening in the expression of Yang energy, which was impacting our forms in Cancer through our beliefs. In Virgo, we are bringing mercurial instincts into a Yin perspective to be refined and put into intentional use. The crescent, the soul, is above, matter below, and held together by spirit. We refine the material world by aligning through spirit to our soul expression as having been informed by Leo. In Libra, Venus is able to shift focus from Taurus's yin of containing our environment and now expresses as yang energy focusing on relating to our environment. In Glyph, we have the circle, which is spirit and also unity, and it is above matter, the cross. We are now embedded in the material world and are compelled through spirit to seek out connection with each other, unity interacting with itself in separate bodies in time and space. Venus in Libra is also about harmony as it is in Taurus. As we engage with others, are we doing so in a harmonious way? Is the way that we're impacted by others in the environment and our experiences in harmony with us? Harmony is about resonance. In order for our soul to individuate the way it's meant to, our experiences and beliefs must come into harmony and resonance with both of our authentic selves and the environments we're expressing those selves in, because unity does not want to be at odds with itself. When out of resonance, karma is born, and more processing is needed to work through these karmas to bring ourselves back into harmony. Scorpio, the next yin sign, is the container for those things to be worked out. It holds our karmas and the work our soul has been doing up to this point and creates opportunities in our environments for us to work through our issues and come into greater resonance. In Glyph, Pluto is the material, the cross, propping up the soul, the crescent, while the soul is striving upward too, but disconnected from spirit and unity. Karma is the disconnect, and the opportunities to correct this is driven by spirit calling us upward. Scorpio holds the act of ritual or structured practices or systems such as psychology as a container for that work 
as well as transcendental practices. Up to this point, you can start to get a clearer picture of how the ways in which we express our yang informs what the containers that make up the yin signs hold for us. Recognizing the different ways that we engage this process in each moment can be illuminating and empowering and supports us in taking ownership of our actions and beliefs. And this is exactly what Pluto and Scorpio is meant to help us with. Sagittarius supports this. Coming out of Scorpio, where we have been doing the work to sort out and correct our false beliefs through the karmic process and aligning ourselves into greater resonance with our higher truths, we can begin to pull ourselves above the more personal work that we've been doing up to this point and start to see a bigger picture emerge, bigger than ourselves and our personal challenges. In Glyph, Jupiter, the crescent over the cross, is the soul rising above matter. We are rising above our material struggles in order to get a higher perspective. Being a gang sign in Sagittarius, what we express here is our worldviews. The worldviews that we carry and the way that that informs our actions going further out into the world directly feeds Capricorn, the next yin sign. The structures that we create collectively as a society, our societal structures, governments, buildings, and systems is the densest expression of our collective agreements and collective beliefs. Here the glyph of Jupiter is flipped and matter is above, the soul below. Matter is given its greatest prominence in the sign, the final earth sign of the zodiac, and is the full maturation of what we have been building. What matter has matured into at this point depends entirely on what we have been feeding it and sustaining it with throughout all of the previous yin and yang signs. This is why the opportunity that Sagittarius affords us to get straight with our beliefs and agreements about who and what we are is such a benefit. By time matter has manifested in Capricorn and become dense, it is harder to shift. In yin container, it is a collective manifestation. In order to shift it, you need a much greater collective effort, more agreements and an ability to work together. To really impact matter on this level, one may go out into the world and work really hard within the confines of the material, and when doing this can have a great and lasting impact. Another route is to channel the inspirational Sagittarius and use the shifting and expansion of beliefs and higher perspective to inspire people into change. And yet one other way is to focus on fine tuning your own personal frequency to come into greater resonance and aligning with your personal truths and authentic soul expression. This impacts the collective in a different way. By expressing our most authentic selves, we send out a signal of personal embodiment and feed that energy back to the collective to osmos with. And we pave the way for others to see beyond the societal constructs, to show that there is a way forward into living in greater resonance with what is authentic to you. This is, of course, enacted through Aquarius. In Aquarius, the process of full individuation is complete. We have developed in ways that are personal, as well as having developed as members of society. In Aquarius, we bridge these two realms of development into a true sense of ourselves, not just as an individual or member of society, but as someone who has found our place both within and without. This is where the work of mastery is completed. The work we have done is to anchor our soul in its true light and to form yin through the cultivation of our consciousness yang. In glyph, Uranus shows two crescents above, perfectly balanced, flanking the cross, representing the material, and spirit anchoring it below. The two crescents show that the soul is in harmony with other souls. In other words, it is with full resonance and attracts others who are in resonance with it, because it is balanced perfectly above matter, mastery over matter is complete. The soul is in full resonance with spirit as well, which contains all of unity, and is being anchored by unity. The yang and yang together support the creation and embodiment of the individuated soul in a way that, in Aquarius, respects the intrinsic belonging of all. In Aquarius, by the sheer quality of our resonance, we are able to call in and manifest the most supportive environments for ourselves. Environments that provide authentic connections with resonant beings and authentic expressions within communities and environments that resonate and reflect our truths back at us, creating the world we want through the intersection of light as expressed through our essence. Then finally, in Pisces, our journey is completed. 
having fully actualized the way that we uniquely manifest as spirits and having anchored that in society, we connect back to which is beyond. We complete the journey back to spirit and ascend as a master. In glyph, we see the soul rising upward out of the material. In the beginning with Mars, we saw an arrow striking out from spirit or source void of matter going on to create and engage matter in many forms through the combination of yin and yang. Then in Neptune, we see the soul as the crescent has taken form and is now as represented again by arrows as arising from matter, the soul rising above matter and elevating humanity with it. So that completes my talk for today. Please feel free to contact me with any questions and keep an eye out for future videos on this topic where I will explore these principles in the natal chart for practical applications. Thank you for joining me and I hope that it was informative. Blessings everyone.